okay, feel free to, to circulate here, guys. Okay, so this is a handheld unit, surface unit, what we call a surface unit. And the arc is here. These are calibrated. They have a high electrical charge, okay? Um, as I've learned, the, this science is, this is called plasma science. It's very complicated, and I don't even pretend to n understand it. But the way that oxygen ions are separated is based on how strong the electrical current is between the two points. Okay, that's what disassociates the molecule, and the ability of that to reassociate is based on the spacing of those reactive oxygen species, okay? So what happens is, are we going to turn this on? Yeah, you've got the eye water in there. Okay, well, I'll let you spray it. Oh. I'll let you spray it. How long do those usually last in the machine itself? The machine, how long, I mean, from a standpoint of? How long does it get for before? It just has to be calibrated once a year. Once a year? So it's good for years? Years. Okay, so Matt's going to show you so basically, you, you have a hose, okay, the solution is brought up, and you prime the machine, and then you... Sorry, I primed everything yesterday, so we're inside the machine, uh, so it's ready to go. Basically, it's a point and point. Point and shoot. You'll see the arc coming through. See the arc? And you'll see the water. Well, right now, it's just the ionized water. You can spray this on anything, and it won't affect any equipment. You actually spray down your own equipment. Once you're done in that room, so you're you know, keeping everything from getting contaminated, you can spray down your entire hose, go back, spray the entire equipment. And it's you know, pretty much as easy as that. So. It's really just point and shoot, okay? If anybody wants to come up. And what we do is we teach people, we have a training program, and we teach people how to, to cover a wall. Okay, one of the things for you in the hospital situation, also in the nursing home situation, Absolutely, perfect. Read that, read that paper that I, I have there. Twenty-four inches. So we teach you how to do a pattern so you're consistent. One of the best things that we did with this, we, we showed the CDC how when we doffing patients with Ebola, well, well, before they doff, we just spray them instead of using bleach. Have you, uh, have you used it in an air hammer unit when you're doing preventative maintenance or cleaning the air hammer unit that may be contaminated? Good question. Actually, these, uh, these guys can speak to that. But yes, DARPA did extensive studies about using it in high vac and the length of time that you need to spray in order to, to get the disinfection. So there are, there is data and there are certain criteria that you have to meet, but yes, it can be used. But what about soft surfaces, like the, the curtains? About what? What about soft surfaces, like the curtains? It works. We can't make that claim because we don't have it through the EPA yet, okay? But in the paper, uh, it talks all about all different kinds of fabrics. You can use it on your mattresses. You can use it on your stretchers. You can use it basically on anything you want, and it works. It's just that we can't put it in the labeling because it's EPA. And you do it in your patient rooms? Every day. Every day? Well, every day, every discharge. discharge. Every discharge. We, of course, we only have two units, so we prioritize C. diff, MRSA, VRE, you know, pseudomonas, isolation person first, and then we do our ORs, then we do our patient waiting areas, all of our, uh, outpatient waiting areas, we do our rehab, and then if there's time, then we go and we do the rest of the patient rooms. Oh, the ED gets done every day. It's been... How is the hospital? 300 bed. One side? 
one site, but lots of outpatient areas. We use two, yeah. Correct. Yeah. And, your EPS staff is trying to do it. Who does it? We, we started out, we trained eight people. And unfortunately, EVS staff tends to turn over very quickly. And then we found out that people were, what I would say to you is, is that, does anybody else want to try this? This is really, this is really fun. <laughs> this is really fun. You, it's very lightweight. You don't want to drop it, okay? So can you damage it? Yeah, okay? So you really have to pick people that are going to be conscientious because, what's your first name? Carmen. As Carmen showed you, if you go, that's not going to work, right? But so the answer to, to this is, is if you want to do spot cleaning, it'll work very well for spot cleaning, but it also will work very nicely for whole room disinfection. Now for a room this size, you'd want to use you'd want to use three so that you could fill the room up more quickly. So if you hear about the data saying, well, it took two hours to do a room, if you're doing a room this size or say these two, it's going to take that long to get the distribution of the fog in that room to get the contact time. Do you see what I'm saying? It takes a while to fill the room, so you've got to take that into account. The amount of time it takes to kill is still three seconds. So in a normal room, you can evacuate in seven or eight minutes. In a larger space, you're going to have to probably use a fan or something to help you dissipate. Not that it's going to hurt anybody. It's just that we have to get down to one part per million peroxide. Do you so. use it in any of your renovation or uh, construction projects? The answer is yes, but we wait. We, we do it after we've cleaned all the HEPA filters out and, and you know, we've cleaned the ducts and then we go ahead and use it. Yeah, so yeah, we use it routinely. Our pediatric units, we use it all the time. We use it up in the nursery and the, and the, uh, and the NICUs. Um, we had an outbreak of H1N1. Uh, a year ago, I mean, half the staff was sick. We had, and we went in, and three consecutive nights we went in and steramisted, you know, your phones, your, your, your keyboards, your, your monitors, they all are going to be fine. They're all going to be disinfected. And that's, you know, that's what you pass. So, you know, I was thinking last night, I was thinking, you know, how could you make a really big deal? You could take all your cell phones, get everybody to spray their cell phones, you know. <laughs> I mean, it's really, it, it, this machine is really compatible with all surfaces. Again, can't make the claim because soft fabrics is only one product that's, that has EP clearance for soft fabrics. Okay, and, and going back to your curtains, okay, if you're going to have linen curtains, spray them. And one of the suggestions, and there was a, a really good speaker at Shea last year, if you put a, a plastic uh, a laminate on your, on your curtains, where you know, people are always grabbing, if you could just routinely disinfect the leading edge of your curtains with steramist, you'd probably get a, a really a lowering your endemic rate. Nobody wants to play? OK. We can do it. There are instructions for doing it, but we send it to Tomi to do it. And unfortunately, our EVS staff has not been the best, and they've dropped a couple units, so we get it done when we get it repaired. So um, going back to your locker rooms. OK, so you're worried about uh, athlete's foot, right? You're worried about residual moisture, right? So. This is going to be very effective against your molds. So and it's going to get everywhere. So what you could do is you could open up the lockers, spray those as well. So when you're misting, you're really getting everything. Go ahead. Yeah? Did you mention PPE for this? Our PPE um, and, and the PPE that we use 
again, it depends what we're doing, okay? If we're going in to do a mold remediation area, something like that, okay, we're going to wear more PPE. If we're doing Ebola, we're going to have a full Tyvek suit on and pappers and everything. For routine use, we use um, a face shield and 95 mask and then a gown and gloves appropriate for the room that you're cleaning. Okay, so if it's a contact isolation room, you're going to wear the appropriate PPE anyway. So it sounds like you're designing PPE more for the environment than the machine. That's what I'm asking. If exactly. An N95 mask and a face shield. Okay. That's it. Only because it is an, an irritant, like anything is, and so OSHA requires us to, to put that. Okay. We've had no we've had no OSHA issues whatsoever in four years of use. So